After Russia blamed the U.S. for a missile attack on Crimea, Pentagon claimed that Ukraine makes its own targeting decisions and conducts its own military operations. Well, according to Russia's defense ministry, Ukraine used Army Tactical Missile Systems or Attackens rockets supplied and programmed by the United States. The ministry claimed four of the rockets were intercepted over the city of Sevastopol, but fragments from the fifth rocket led to casualties among civilians on the ground. The strike left at least four people dead and more than 150 injured. Russia's foreign ministry had summoned U.S. Ambassador Lynn Tracy over the attack. In the meeting, Moscow reiterated that Washington bears equal responsibility with Kiev for the attack and formally warned of a retaliation. Thereafter, in a statement, U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said the country lamented any civilian loss of life. We provide weapons to Ukraine so it can defend its sovereign <laughs> territory against armed aggression. Uh, that includes in Crimea, which of course is part of Ukraine. And Russia could stop this war today and end the suffering caused by the war Russia launched today if it would stop its occupation of sovereign uh, Ukrainian territory and stop launching attacks on civilians. Meanwhile, Russia also accused the United Nations of double standards. We do not deliberately target any, any civilian, uh, civilian infrastructure in Ukraine. Only that, that infrastructure that relates to, to the uh, military industrial complex of Ukraine. We do not bomb cities. We do not bomb civilians. Uh, so that's it. We, we, we are not doing what, what Israel is doing in Gaza. A day after the attack on Crimea, a Russian double-tap missile attacked Ukrainian town. At least five people were killed and 41 others were injured in what Kiev said was one of the largest attacks on civilians. As tensions on the battlefield continue to escalate, Ukrainian President Zelensky replaced Kiev's commander of joint forces. He is appointed Brigadier General Andrei Anatov as commander-in-chief, replacing Lieutenant General Yuri Sodol. This after a series of reports suggested that Sodol had performed badly in Ukraine's two-year war with Russia. All right, for more on this, we're now being joined by Ado Zakim, Senior Advisor at Center for Strategic and International Studies from Washington, D.C. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on World DNA &E this morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, of course, tensions have been on the boil between Russia and the West, but directly blaming the United States right now. Some may say that's an escalation. What's your assessment of this? Well, uh, I suppose, relatively speaking, it's an escalation in the sense that uh, previously we've put far more limitations on Ukraine. Uh, the argument, of course, is we shouldn't have put those limitations on in the first place. And we've slowly essentially been raising those limitations, first by allowing uh, firing into Crimea, then allowing firing around uh, Kharkiv, and now essentially saying that the Ukrainians can hit Russia in self-defense. Now, in, this, in all of this, uh, some of the Europeans, the French, the British, uh, have been ahead of us anyway. So escalation is probably the wrong word. Uh, Mr. Zakim, now when France mentioned that they are not opposed, or rather when Macron mentioned that he's not opposed to the idea of foreign troops entering Ukraine, and when David Cameron, I think on the same day, mentioned that it's up to Ukraine if they want to target inside Russia, and now U.S. is saying that Ukraine decides its own, uh, you know, targets inside Russia or outside. Now, of course, in the earlier two times we heard that Russia took that as an escalation. And this time, Russia has said it in as many words that a retaliation will definitely follow. What kind of retaliation can we expect now? Well, uh, I, can, I think that Mr. Putin, to some extent, is bluffing. Remember, mm -hmm. uh, earlier on, the, the, the retaliation they seemed to uh, hint at was some kind of nuclear retaliation. That didn't happen. Every time we finally sent weapons that the Ukrainians had been begging for for months, um, the Russians made threats and those threats didn't happen. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if the Russians retaliate against NATO, they don't have the troops available to really deal with that right now. Most of their troops are committed to the south. Um, 
do the Russians really want to go nuclear? Do they know how we'll respond? Uh, that's a very high risk for them as well. So uh, I suspect that once again, Mr. Putin is making threats. Uh, it's not clear how he could carry them out. Calling it a threat or a bluff or a rhetoric at the moment, but nobody really wants to involve, get themselves involved in a nuclear war. Thank you so much for joining in. That was Dov Zakim joining us from Washington, D.C. Pleasure having you on, Waldi Thank you for having me.